switch off. You're not on the wrong channel. This is Motorhome Campervan on YouTube. And this really is a campervan. Mm. Doesn't look much like one, does it? Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm at the Caravan and Motorhome Club site at Ferry Meadows near Peterborough. And this unlikely looking campervan is the Volkswagen Caddy California. In fact, it's the latest addition to Volkswagen's own campervan range, the California range. The best-selling campervans just about anywhere. Now, we all know about the T6, which now comes as a California beach camper, a California beach tour, a California coast, and at the top, the California ocean, which of course we videoed. You can watch that if you like after this video. And then at the very top of the range, there's the much bigger crafter based Grand California. You can spend a hundred grand on one of those if you really start ticking the options boxes. But this is a much simpler, much more affordable way into camper vanning. Now, this Caddy California is, of course, based on the latest Caddy. Now, the Caddy comes as a van and as a people carrier, the Caddy Life. And also, of course, now as a camper van. It also comes in two different lengths. This is the longer maxi version. And, well, doesn't it look rather smart? But, despite this blank grill, it's not an electric vehicle, as you might have thought. Under the bonnet, you can have a 1.5 litre petrol engine with 114 PS, or a choice of two litre diesel engines, 102 PS with a six speed manual gearbox, or 122 PS with the seven speed DSG gearbox that we've got here. And the petrol one, of course, that's available as manual or DSG as well, and no difference with the power output on the petrol one. Volkswagen says those new diesel engines are the first to have its twin dosing system, which actually injects the AdBlue twice to reduce emissions even further. Um, a hybrid model is planned, um, but we don't know yet whether that will be available in the Caddy California. Um, and there is a four wheel drive option. Again, no details yet on whether you'll be able to get that in camper van trim. One thing that is important to know, though, is that these latest caddies are based on the MQB platform, which also underpins the latest Mark 8 Golf. So it should be a lovely thing on the road. It's a proper car-derived vehicle now, not just a, another commercial. It is properly car-based and on the latest technology. So you get more assistance systems offered than ever before, some of them standard and some optional. Now, taking a look at the size of the vehicle, yes, it looks very compact in a way, doesn't it? Very car-like with that long bonnet. But yes, that long bonnet does contribute to its length. As I say, this is the longer, longer maxi version. If you go for the shorter standard length Caddy California, that's four and a half meters long but it does somewhat compromise what you get inside in terms of the boot area, which we'll come to later on. This longer version is 4.85 metres long. Now, if you compare that with, say, a Volkswagen Passat estate car, that's 4.77 metres long, and a T6.1 Transporter in short wheelbase form, that's 4.9 metres. So there's very little difference in length between this and the much bigger, in, much bigger in terms of internal space, much bigger Transporter T6.1. So maybe not quite as compact as it at first appears. One thing you notice straight away compa in comparison with more conventional camper vans is that there's no pop top. You get these roof rails instead on the top, which I have to say useful for adding bikes canoes, surfboards, and maybe even a roof box for extra storage if you're going away for longer periods. Also worth noting that this is a nice sort of car park friendly height, 1.8 meters tall. So if you're using it as your daily driver, that's certainly worth knowing. Also worth knowing that you've got sliding doors on either side, although these windows 
although they're nice and flush, they're both fixed here and here. 16 inch alloy wheels and above you've got a bit more of a shoulder over the over the wheel arch. Certainly this is a more handsome vehicle than the old caddy and you've got these distinctive tall rear lights as well and the, the sort of posher badging of caddy across the tailgate. It's a better looking vehicle than the old caddy. You can get larger wheels as well and obviously different colours. This is a rather nice dark metallic blue. Of course, a major part of a camper van like this is the fact it will be a daily driver vehicle, something that you'll go to the shops in, maybe do the school run, all that sort of thing, as well as being a camper van at the weekend. And that's why having the twin sliding doors is so, so much of a boon. Easy in car parks, easy getting kids in and out, and if you're carrying adults, well, there's loads and loads of headroom. I could have a top hat in here, loads of leg room, and these little little tables, although I'm not sure what you'd use them for because they're a bit flimsy. Maybe a Costa coffee will fit in there, um, but you're not going to do any writing or anything on them. Um, yeah, not sure about those. But loads of legroom, very practical five-seater car. By now, you probably think I've gone stark staring mad. I've got some new estate car, and for some reason I think it's a camper van, just because it says California on the side. Well, it is a camper van. Maybe not quite a camper van as you normally know it, but it is a camper van. Yes, it's got a little bit of a kitchen. We'll come to that in a minute. But it's a big move on from the caddy camper that was sold in the UK very, very briefly about seven years ago. So there is a bit of a kitchen, but much more importantly, there is a bed and it has a new bed making system. So let's show you how you sleep in a caddy California. The first thing we have to do is ensure that the front seats are all the way forward. I think the backrests need to be up a bit as well. Next, we fold the back seats flat. Just pull that tag and down they go. Same on this side. At this point, I should say that you can now just unfurl the bed over the top of the folded rear seats. But I'm not going to do that because you can, if you're only using this as a two-person van, which, unless you've got people sleeping in an awning, it's only a two-berth actually in the vehicle, of course. So if you're only using it as a two-berth, then you can leave the seats at home. And that does give you a lot more storage space. Tip the seats forward, and then there are these little catches underneath. Just undo those. There's even a handle on the back of the seat to lift it out. The system's repeated on the other side, but of course this is now a double passenger seat, so it's probably roughly twice the weight of the single seat on the offside, and it does need a lot more manhandling to get it out. I have to say, I can just about manage this on my own, but it would be easier with a second person to help. Now, with or without the back seats in place, the next stage is very simple, and it's exactly the same. Just undo that strap, and the bed simply unfurls, and then it has a leg at each side that slots in onto the B-pillar. So that one's done. Now you've probably noticed that quite a bit of the bed making has to be done from outside the vehicle, but you could do it quite quickly once you've got the knack. It's not complicated or difficult, it just does mean having the doors open. So Caddy California will certainly be more fun when the weather's good. When you've made the bed though, it is a decent size, certainly in length 1.98 metres long. Width is a bit more petite, uh, 1.07 metres, so similar to a lot of T6 campers in that it's quite a narrow double bed. 
the maximum headroom above the bed is about 740 millimetres less in the back here. You can see that I'm sort of stooped over when I'm sitting on the end of the bed. But in this long wheelbase version, you have got a bit of boot space somewhere where you could keep a porta potty perhaps, or somewhere where you can just sit to take your shoes off before you get into bed. So it is useful having that bit of extra length. The bed hasn't got a terribly thick mattress, but it is on these nice plastic springs for comfort. And I have to say, it does seem a very comfortable bed. The other thing that you'll notice, and a brand new feature on this latest caddy, is the panoramic glass roof. It doesn't open, it's a fixed panel, but it's huge. Volkswagen says that the actual transparent area is 1.4 metres square. Wow. What a place to lie and look at the stars. Now, you might have noticed that there's one thing missing. I don't think I'd be staying on a caravan club site for very long with no coverings on the window. I think I might get thrown off quite quickly. So, no curtains, no blinds, but you do get this bag. Well, I suppose they are blinds of a type. They're these material screens. Now this is the big one for the windscreen. And let's go and put that in place. And then you've also got these straps that attach around the sun visors. At the front that tucks in at the leading edge of the dashboard. And then there's a piece that goes round the mirror with some Velcro and then you just finish tucking in at the front here it's wedging that in at the front of the dashboard the screens for the cab windows are nice and straightforward they just attach with magnets all the way around all the uh, Screens are shaped, so this one's got a cutout for the door handle on the sliding door. But the sliding door ones are slightly more fiddly because obviously you've got to uh, do them with the door open so that you can get to some metal because obviously the, uh, the magnets need metal to stick to. They're not going to stick to the plastic trims on the inside of the door. So it can be a bit fiddly, these probably a knack to it, which I've only done this once so far, so I haven't really got the knack yet, but... Yeah, we get in there. Yep. So, and then the same on the other side. Now we're all nice and cosy with our screens in place. Of course there is one for the panoramic roof as well and for the tailgate. I have to say, I think I'd invest in some silver screens. If I could find somebody that makes some silver screens, they'd give you a bit more insulation and be a lot less fiddly to put in. But that's how Volkswagen have done it, I suppose, to keep the automotive appearance that you haven't got curtains or anything hanging in the windows. And I do rather like the way you've got these pocket storage pockets on the back windows so that you don't need to use blinds there. Not only does it give you somewhere to keep all your stuff. But, as I say, those blinds permanently in place. But that's not the only thing that's clever about these storage bags. They just unclip. Three toggles at the top little pull catches at the bottom and then you can take them out and better still attach the carrying strap and you take them indoors load them up with your clothes brilliant now obviously a big part of life with a caddy california is about the outside world living al fresco so like the other California models, the larger T6 and Grand Californias, 
you have outdoor chairs as part of the package and an outdoor table as well. And they're all stored in the pouch under the bed. They're exactly the same chairs as you get in a T6. And the table as well. relax. And so finally the bit you've been waiting for I'm sure, the kitchen. Now there's no fridge, no sink, no water carrier, but you have got a kitchen of sorts. You have this very nicely made slide out unit for storage, room for kettle, plates, cups, bowls, that sort of thing in there. Nice cutlery drawer underneath, room for a bit more storage. And then on top, this slide out cooker. And it just locks neatly in place when it gets to the end of its runners. And it's a single burner hob. Gas locker is underneath the, uh, the end of the bed, or this end of the bed. And that's it, that's what you get. If you want um, a cool box, you'll have to bring your own. Um, if you want water carrier, you'll have to bring your own. But this is what you get in a Caddy California. So a big step up on the previous Caddy camper, which had nothing, um, but obviously this is basic camping. You probably will want an awning over the back too, unless you're gonna be only camping in the south of France or Spain or somewhere. Um, Volkswagen will offer its own freestanding um, air beam awning, but that won't be ready or available until probably second quarter of 2022. Um, in the meantime, I'm sure there are plenty of other suppliers, the likes of Outwell and Van Gogh and so on, that will supply you a freestanding awning that will work just as well. So, the gas locker. So, the gas locker you can get to when the seats are in place, but it's easier when they're not. And it's a nice sealed compartment just for a single camping gas system. All the furniture, I have to say, is top-notch quality, even though there's not a lot of it. And you don't have to pack away the bed, although it is now stowed to use the kitchen. Bed up, bed down, you can use the kitchen. But most important test of all, the Bacon Sarni test. Can the Caddy Fat California pass the bacon sandwich test? So one thing you do notice when you're cooking is it's not easy to get your hands, you need little hands to get to the cutlery that not being a great cook you've forgotten but you can just about, if you've got little hands you can still just about get your cutlery out of the drawer there. The other thing you'll notice is that there is a useful bit of Worktop space, preparation space. So it's actually, for what it is, it's not a bad little kitchen. And even better, you can do most of your cooking sitting down. Fantastic. God, I'm ready for this. Even in November, on a sunny day like this, sitting outside, with a bacon sandwich. Can't beat it. So we've tried the bed and the Caddy California has passed the bacon sandwich test. Now, let's see what it's like on the road. So as you'd expect, it feels like a Volkswagen car, because it is a Volkswagen car. Um, all this instrumentation, facer and everything is very Golf. Um, the uh, sat-nav screen's very clear. Slightly disappointingly though, that isn't a reversing camera, and even the parking sensors are an option. Um, I think with the length of this vehicle and the fact that you've got 
you sit quite low relative to the back window um, so you really do want well the very very least parking sensors but I'd really want I'd want a reversing camera if this was mine um, other than that these little slider controls underneath the sat nav I don't see the point in those you've got up and down for the radio volume on the steering wheel heater controls are easier to to find with the main touch screen nine inch touch screen here so these little fiddly controls underneath which um, aren't illuminated at night anyway I don't know what the point of those is and um, then if we press the assist button you've got various um, modern assistance systems not as many as you'd, you'd expect perhaps and you haven't got things like keyless entry um, but it will remind you to stop for a coffee if you've been driving for too long um, it will automatically brake if it thinks you're going to hit something um, you know, around town and it has lane assistance um, lane assistance is something really find quite nannying um, it often makes the steering feel quite unnatural when you actually know that you're cutting across a white line but of course the system doesn't know that and the worst thing is of all that you can turn the lane assistance off but then when you when you turn the engine off start up again you have to go through all the rigmarole of turning it off all over again no thank you um, sat nav is very good though um, and the other thing you notice when you're driving this is the headroom is just enormous I could wear a top hat and probably a top hat on top of my top hat and I'd still be okay this windscreen too it feels huge compared with sitting in a normal golf or something and then driving well it handles well it, this long wheelbase really helps the ride quality is excellent really really excellent um, and then DSG seven-speed DSG gearbox on this one of course well their um, Volkswagen DSG gearbox is always very smooth um, the only thing I do find is that and we probably find it just now if you come down to a stop the start-stop system is a little bit over enthusiastic to stop and it doesn't seem quite so enthusiastic to start up again which when you come down to a t-junction and you think oh I can go and then it doesn't let you or it doesn't not quite as ready as you are it can be quite frustrating but uh, other than that um, key points I think uh, that the ride quality is excellent it's comfortable I could um, easily do a very long journey on this very comfortably performance 122 PS um, I, I wouldn't want less I don't think um, it's more than adequate but perhaps not quite as quick as I hoped it might be um, I'm sure for most buyers it'll be, it'll be absolutely fine yeah he thought I was going to go into the back of that Honda then so it gave me a silly warning when I knew that he was turning off and there was plenty of, plenty of room but hey hey that's modern assistance systems for you. Or oh, I should perhaps add, it's very quiet, very smooth and quiet. So the Caddy California. This is as much its home as on the campsite doing the shopping. And it's a great little car. It's basic as a camper, but it's also by far the most affordable way into having a Volkswagen California, Volkswagen's own camper van brand. Now, I can't confirm prices. We'll have to pop those up on the screen because I'm still waiting for them from Volkswagen as I'm filming this. But I can tell you that there are various options on this particular vehicle. It has the sat-nav, the panoramic roof, floor mats, parking sensors, and the plus pack. All those you need to add on to the basic on-the-road price. But, a nice little camper, if you want something simple. Mm -hmm.